Hi guys, Mr. Roth Waffles here. This is going to be your no-nonsense guide to do the Firebase Z Easter Egg. Let's begin. When you spawn into your game, run over to Ravanoth next to the Pack-a-Punch and have a chat with him by holding square. Then teleport to the main military base and begin the usual process for acting the power. If you need some extra tips for this, you don't know how to do it, there's a guide for it on my channel, which is linked in the description and in the corner of the screen right now. But the gist of it is that you go to each of the three Ethereum reactors that are indicated on your screen, activate, and then fill each one with souls. And when each one's completed, it will give local power to that area of the map. So you've got to do this three times because there are three reactors. And once all three are are done, power will be restored to the facility. This also activates Pack-a-Punch. When you finish that third reactor, go through the teleporter back to Ravanov and run up to him and hold square to have a chat. Then you should get a message from Peck telling you that you need to return to the military compound and he's got a job for you or something. You can find Peck in mission control behind these shutters or this glass window here. When you get there, you should have a hint to hold square to talk to him. You then need to go back to Ravanov in the spawn. I know lots of running back and forth, maybe by stamina up to make this faster and talk to him once more and when he's finished that little conversation with you in the spawn he will give you a key card which you can pick up from right in front of him with that key card you can now open three lockers around the map the first locker is actually right here just across from where ravanov is on the right hand side of this building and if you hold square to use the locker key on it it will open up and there is a serum inside that you can then pick up we're going to do that with this locker and then go on to the next two lockers the second locker is inside the colonel's office so come up here and it's on the left hand side you just once again hold square, use your key card, and then grab the serum that is inside. And the third and final locker is just here on the way to the kind of engineering area part of the map. And once again, we're going to open it with a key card and then grab the serum that is inside. You now need to head to the field hospital, which is near the barracks, and use this vacuum cleaner to mix those three serums. It's going to spin around a little bit and watch out because this is going to spawn in loads of hellhounds. So take all of the damned doggies down, and once they're all dead, you can go back to the infernal vacuum cleaner that you were using to mix the serums and grab it. This can now be brought up to this rectangular AC unit on top of the mission control building and we're going to place the hellish hoover on it and what that's going to do is inject truth serum into the air that Dr. Peck is breathing. So head down to Dr. Peck and hold square to interact with him. Then Peck is going to dance for you. Yep, that's not a joke. He's going to dance, but he's then going to tell you to head to the data center, which is the building with the big satellite dish on top. And you are going to want to come and run along this computer on the left hand side just here. And you may need to wait a little bit because sometimes this doesn't activate straight away, but basically brush along it a bunch and it should trigger a quote from Peck and you should be able to unlock this machine as well. When the machine unlocks, it will give you access to four yellow objects, which you can grab. These replace your support grenades. So maybe a monkey bomb or something like that. And we're going to be using them to suck up mimics in a moment. Now, before we go any further, I think this is a good time to jump in and say that you are going to need the Ray K for a future step in the Easter egg. And so as we're at a step now, the mimic step, which takes a little bit of time, it's a good opportunity to start working on the Ray K alongside what you're doing with the mimics. The good news is that you are able to use a Ray K from a legendary trial reward, the trials machine being just next to the portal by the helipad, or from the mystery box in order to do this. So you might get really lucky and get a Ray K from either of those sources really early in your game and then you don't even need to worry about it. You can just hold on to the Ray K until we get to that future step. However, if you want to build it for yourself, you can guarantee yourself a free Ray K and I have a full guide for that linked in the top right hand corner of the screen right now and in the description. In my opinion, the best thing to do is to start doing trials fairly early in your game after you get a decent number of points stashed up and to start building the Ray K and that way you basically have both sides of things covered. If you get lucky and your first legendary reward is the Ray K, then you're golden. But if you get unlucky that first time and you still haven't got it out of the box, you may as well just finish off building it because this Easter egg quest is going to take us into reasonably high rounds anyway. And so you should have time to, for example, get your mangler part and stuff like that. But like I said, full guide already on my channel. Check that video out, guys. Snapping back to where we currently are in the Easter egg, though, we're going to focus on the mimic step. That yellow outlined special grenade that we just picked up off the computer basically acts like a C4 crossed with a Pokeball. You throw it down onto the floor and then double tap square and it will suck in a zombie if the zombie's near it and try and capture it. You'll only successfully capture stuff if the thing you're trying to suck in is on a low health. It has to have like maybe a tenth of its health remaining, so you're going to need to whittle down the health of whatever you're trying to capture. If the thing you're trying to capture breaks out, it will destroy your Pokeball and you need to go back to that original computer and pick up another one. We don't care about zombies though. We only care about mimics. There's actually a lot of misinformation about how this step works. What you need to do when you get onto the step is run around the map and look on the floor 
draw for an item like a chopper gunner, for example, that normally would indicate that a mimic is going to jump up and attack you. Now, what should happen if you're in the right area is that you'll actually potentially come across multiple items on the floor and one of those will jump up and be a mimic and attack you, but the others may stay there just next to it without being able to be picked up. They're just idle. That's basically the sign that you need that this mimic is one of the special mimics that we're going to be using for the Easter egg. Here's an example. In the village, in this room here, Pex Quarters, there are loads of items on the floor. These are all mimics waiting to be triggered and one of them is going to spring up at me and attack me. You need to get that mimic down to low health and then throw your Pokeball, double tap square to try and suck it inside and then if it successfully confirms, you can bring that mimic back to the original computer. Hold square on the side of the machine so that you don't just pick up a new Pokeball, you actually input the current one you have and it will process the memory of the mimic. If you accidentally captured the wrong mimic, it will have a character talk who is not relevant to the Easter egg, or it will say memory corrupted. The only three characters we care about are Sokolov, Brahms, and Zabim. So if you've got a different name, you need to try again. I'm going to list some locations where you can get these items on the floor and have mimics spawn as a result now. This isn't an exhaustive list, but it should give you an idea of what to look for, and I will update the description of this video with a full list of chopper spawns as the community finds them. You've got the village spawn to start with that I already showed you. There were like seven or eight items in there. You also have a possible spawn out in the open in front of the weapons lab quite near to the motor pool. The items can be a bit spread out, so some of the items might be inside the motor pool office, for example. You may also find a load of mimic items in the planning offices, and one place that I think is a real hot spot is this area, the jug machine. There's some terminals in there, there are items amongst those, there'll be items up potentially on the walkway going towards the colonel's office, there might be items in there as well. They're kind of spread out in that zone. Also, a pro tip, if you lose your mimic, like if it pops out and you lose it, it's a good idea to quickly check all of the jungle areas in your game just to see if it's got caught outside. It might have got stuck or lost. Now, if you've been running around and you can't find any of these things on the floor and you're confused because you've got no mimics, go to the next round, move around the map and see if you've potentially got a different spawn. Also, if you come across a mimic that you didn't notice spawn in in front of you, you may actually be finding a mimic that you had spawned in earlier that just got lost on his way. And so he would be worth sucking in and trying on the machine just to see if that that is your mimic after all. In other words, while you're on this step, it really doesn't hurt to just keep feeding the machine mimics. Even if they're the wrong ones, it doesn't matter. And eventually, if you find those objects on the floor, you will then get the correct mimics and you'll be able to progress with the Easter egg. I lost the mimic in my game, couldn't find it for like two rounds, and then I found it, I sucked it in, and voila, I had my third one done and I got my third quote. Each one, by the way, is going to give you a different code, but you don't need to write it down. Weevil will remember it for you. It's also worth rerunning over items that you've already seen during this step, just in case they do spawn as a mimic, because the game gives you kind of backups sometimes. Once you've got codes, from Zabim, Sokolov, and Brahms, you're on to the next step. Thank goodness. Now that you've successfully got all three codes that you need, a floppy disk will come out of that machine and you can pick it up by holding square. Then you can run over to this machine in the planning offices and enter that floppy disk that we just grabbed. Right after you do that, you'll be instructed to head to the OPC, the Omega Portal Chamber. That's the big spherical metal building that's been locked until now in the game. Run in there and take a look at it. It's pretty cool. Then you're going to want to head down to where Peck is and talk to him once again. You'll have a little bit of a conversation and be told that you need to get Ethereum crystals. Then at the end of the conversation, when all the characters stop talking, you'll be given a code which you can use to open the locker just next to Peck and it will give you a new device. Grab that off the floor. You now have three Ethereum canisters that you need to find around the map and these can be done in any order. I'm just going to show you the order that I did them in my game. You need the Reiki for one of them and I'm going to show you that one last just to give you a little bit of extra time to try and get it in your game. To do these canisters, you also need a shovel by the way, and that shovel can be acquired from the huts that are in this defense area. As you can see, it's leaning against this crate here. Go over to it and hold square to pick it up. If you can't find it, look in the adjacent huts and you should be able to find the shovel leaning against the wall. First of all, we're going to do the lockdown canister. This one is in the defense area here. You can see that there are piles of dirt on the floor and it's your job to run over these piles of dirt and listen for a beeping sound. 
the beeping tells you if you're getting closer to an ethereum canister. When you've run through the jungle, listened to the sound, found it, and then found the place where you need to dig, you're going to dig up a canister, but it's going to start a lockdown in a bubble, and you're going to need to defend yourself from manglers, dogs, and even potentially zombies. It can be pretty damn hectic, as you can see in my gameplay here. It's pretty nuts. Like, there is a lot going on, so be very careful, and it lasts a fairly long time as well. So before this step, I recommend that you make sure your armor is refreshed, and you maybe buy yourself some ammo. You'll know you're at the end when you get, like, another wave of manglers spawn, and everything kind of gets a little bit more intense, but once the bubble disappears, you're done, and you can pick the Ethereum canister up off the floor. The next canister we need can be dug up in the open lot area next to the planning offices. The same trick can be used listening for the sound of the beeping to dig up, and as you can see, I'm digging in this corner here to spawn it in. You then need to look around all of these Ethereum canisters that have suddenly spawned around you, and find the one that does not have any black smoke inside it. So, as you can see with most of these spawns that I'm showing you, there is white smoke, and there's like a white effect in there, like a glowy effect with some dots, but there is also black smoke with a kind of black flakes floating around. You do not want those. You mustn't pick them up because if you fail this, you'll have to go to the next round to redig up that original canister and spawn all the fake ones in again. And you'll have a load of mimic spawn. So it's just a pain. So run around in this area. You can be in the open lot. You can be in the planning office. You can be on the kind of roof between the two areas. This whole area is going to have lots and lots of these things spawned in. And when you find the one that has no black flakes, double check some of the others just to make sure that you're not getting confused, but then when you're ready to go, hold square on the one that has only white smoke in it, and you will successfully retrieve the Ethereum canister. Your third and final canister requires that you have the Ray K. It doesn't need to be pack a punch, you just need the Ray K84. You're going to find the canister buried in this corner, kind of next to the stairs that lead to the data center. Dig it up, and then you're going to find that it starts teleporting around in this little area near the barracks. You may totally lose sight of it, but that's fine. Just move slowly and look around in the distance ahead of you for where it might have landed. It will be a purple glowing canister. If you see it in one of the barracks, for example, or in the field hospital, then don't go in the room because you'll scare it away and then it will end up in one of the tents nearby or back where you originally dug it up. It will basically move around. You need to keep your distance, pull out your Ray K, press up on your D-pad, or I believe the default key is B on the keyboard in order to switch to the alternate fire of your Ray K, which is like a grenade launcher blob Beyblade launch type thing. And you need to fire that Beyblade at the canister. Then, while the Beyblade is spinning on the canister, you can run over to it and grab it. You can only grab it, though, if that Beyblade is spinning, kind of keeping it locked in place. Now that you have three Ethereum canisters picked up, you're going to need to go to each Ethereum reactor that we originally used at the start of the game to turn on power and hold square on them to basically deposit the Ethereum crystals. This is going to overload the power in the facility, so do this on those three reactors, as you can see I'm doing in the gameplay here. And when you've done the third and final one, it's time to return to the OPC. However, once you get there and you watch what happens, you'll see that Dr. Peck actually has the upper hand still. You need to run back down to Dr. Peck and the blind will be shut, but Weevil will start talking to you after maybe 30 seconds like this. Once you're done talking to him, you need to go back to the planning offices and your characters will have a conversation about potentially using satellites in order to get what we need. You need to wait for this conversation to end and then the computer just here in the planning office will turn on. You can use it by holding square and this will start a kind of mini game almost inside the computer you basically can move a blue dot around using your D-pad on your controller. And if you hover over a yellow dot, it will show you a flag. You need to ignore the American flags and the Russian flags and hover over the yellow dot that gives you a kind of question mark icon instead of a country's flag. That's the one we're looking for. And when you're hovering over it, hit X on your controller to confirm. This will cause a lot of beams to blast out of the sky and it's all pretty cinematic. So you should watch this. And then when that's done, head back into the OPC, the Omega portal chamber and hold square on the right hand side here to teleport into the boss fight. The fight is back in the spawn area and it's against an elder god. Your biggest enemy here is actually going to be the zombies, mimics, and manglers that are going to start chasing you while you try and take down the boss. So at all times, prioritize your own safety over doing boss damage. You can be in the boss fight for a fairly long time and so you're going to want to make sure that you stay safe while you're doing it. But if you do go down, remember the wonder fizz is in spawn so you can grab perks from that 
and you can pack a punch in spawn during the boss fight if you need to. You'll see that the boss has several different attacks. One of them is a slam with its big club hand, so do not go near it whatever happens because it will insta-kill you. You might also see that it fires plague clouds at you. These can be shot out of the air, and if they hit you, they'll just sort of tick down some damage on you over time. And it's also going to open its fist up and fire flaming dogs out just like it does in the defense rounds on rounds 30, 40, etc. Now, while it's doing all those attacks, you can do damage to it, but there is a trick to do even more damage. At certain times in the fight, the boss is going to kind of have a lava pool looking thing on its head, and your characters are all going to call out, okay, now shoot the boss. In this window, the boss has a damage multiplier on it, and so you can do even more damage than you otherwise would do and take it down a lot faster. This will happen periodically over and over again. You'll get a damage phase, and then you'll get a load of other attacks, and then another damage phase, etc. I also, by the way, would recommend that you don't necessarily use shotguns for this fight simply because you have to be quite far away from the boss in order to stay safe while you're shooting it. In my opinion, ranged weapons are going to just be a little bit safer. And like I said, if you're doing this for the first time, it's worth prioritizing your safety over boss damage. If you take the boss down successfully, the cutscene will continue and congrats, you've beaten the Firebase Z Easter egg. I was one of the first teams to complete this live and I've got to say it was a thrilling experience. So Treyarch, thumbs up. And if you've enjoyed this no-nonsense guide, which I've made as clear as I possibly could, then please drop a like and consider subscribing. I'll be making guides like this for all the future Zombies maps, so you don't want to miss out on that content. Thanks everyone, bye for now.